Hey, how's it going? Jossie here, back with another Castle Nathria disc guide. This time we're looking at Huntsman Altamore. Um, I'm gonna be going into the logs to, you know, look where the damage is coming through, uh, try to plan out where the spear shells are gonna be, where the ramps are gonna be. Um, after that, we're gonna go straight into the replay. Uh, this one in particular, where I get this 96 parts. I'm gonna be going over, you know, my thought process throughout the thing uh, and uh, see see how it's done actually in person. Hopefully by the end of this video, you'll know everything you need to know to get your own awesome parses on Huntsman Altamore. Okay, so to start, let's look at the damage taken chart. Um, so Huntsman Altamore is uh, is a kind of a weird fight. Um, honestly, it's not that good for disc at all because the damage, uh, especially in P1 and P2, is not raid damage. It's all like um, damage to individual targets, right? Like spot healing, which is really not a good use case for spirit shell right spirit shell shows your whole team so you don't get full value out of it um basically in all of p1 and p2 and p3 you have a lot of value but you know that's only one third of the fight another bad thing about this fight is that um the timers get messed up depending on when you kill the dogs so actually it makes it really hard to plan for right like if you have if your raid overall has more damage or less damage is going to mean the dogs might skip some abilities um you might get you know less rip souls stuff like that it, it basically it makes it really hard to plan um so what we're gonna do here instead instead of planning out our spear shells actually we're just gonna i'm gonna talk about um each phase and what we want to be looking out for what we want to be doing during those phases so to start in p1 p1 um this block here Honestly, this part has so little healing. Like, there's almost no healing to be done. Um, there's the spread shot, which is like, you know, you can just, like, your healers, like, can just heal by random stuff, right? Like, uh, healing rain or juves or something. It's gonna top everyone up. Um, another thing is the lunge from, from the dog. Um, once again, it only hits, like, five people. It doesn't even hit them that hard it'll you know, hit them to maybe like 80 percent 70 percent life so like yeah not really a good case for a spear hill either and then there's sin seeker which i guess hurts but once again it hits three people so um the best the best thing you can do here is just use spear shell to cover like multiple disabilities right try to use it to cover sin seeker and a spare shot or two and the lunge if you can get it to work out um Personally, I do use Spear Shell on the first Sin Seeker here. It does happen to line up with two Spare Shots. I don't think it catches any of the lunges, but it's a, it's a decent enough Spear Shell. Like, half of it's going to be wasted because it's going on half the rate, which is not going to take damage. You kind of just get lucky based on who uh, who takes damage from the Sin Seeker and the Spare Shots there. Um, in P2, P2 is a lot more clear. Uh, in P2, we're going to be trying to use our Spear Shell on the Rip Souls. Uh, the damage itself from the rip soul is not that high, but um, the reason we want to use spare shell there is that when you give the tank, the target rip soul, a huge buffer, and they get hit by rip soul, they're gonna end up with a lot of life, and that's what we need to do to reduce the health of the uh, the 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 soul. Basically, the bigger shield that you can put on the tank, the less you're gonna have to heal the rip soul afterwards. Um, another thing is. Right after the Rip Soul spawns, while it's alive, it actually deals raid wide damage. Not that much, honestly, but you know, that way you get double purpose out of your spear shells. Um, it's actually a pretty good use. I think you can get every other Rip Soul with spear shell, um, and that's what we're going to be aiming for. First Rip Soul, if we can, um, and then every other one after that. I think in this particular fight, um, once I get the cooldowns, just didn't line up because I just used. Spear Shell in phase one and we killed the first dog too fast, so I didn't have Spear Shell up for the first rip soul, so I used it on the second, and after that I would use it on the fourth. Phase three. So phase three is finally when we get huge raid damage. Every time Hakuda's moves, um the third dog, he does a uh, ton of raid damage to everybody. Um so obviously that's the perfect chance to use Spear Shell. Um the thing about that is it kinda depends on your tanks. Right, the best case scenario for this is like they they know you have spear shell up, or you plan it together with the tanks, and they move him a whole bunch, drop like four stacks or something all at once, and this is all by your spear shell. 
Um, that's not always the case. Sometimes the tank moves them a bit at a time to just drop a few. Um, or it doesn't always line up with your spirit shell because if the tank doesn't drop stacks, they might just die. You can see in this fight here, these big spikes are acutest movements. So there's like a little movement here, a big movement here, no movement, and then two small movements right into each other. Uh, nothing again, and then a big one here. So it's, yeah, once again, it's up to your tank. And most of the time, it's going to be a little irregular unless you guys are extremely coordinated. But even on the downtimes here, it's only like, you see, a couple seconds, right? Like this whole block here is 10 seconds. So within this 10 seconds, with the duration of Spirit Shell, right? You're going to catch a lot of damage. So actually, um, on P3, you can just use Spirit Shell whenever. And you're probably going to, like, you're most definitely going to catch some of Acutus movements, which is going to give you, you know, good value. And finally, P4, um, not really a phase, uh, nothing to heal here except for a spread shot. So, like, yeah, you don't really need to use anything here, just kind of damage the boss until he dies. In terms of other raid cooldowns, um, barrier, you definitely, definitely want a barrier for phase 3. Um, there's huge amounts of damage here, you see way more than other phases in P3. And Technically, you could stack, though usually people aren't, just to avoid the spread shots, but you should be able to catch a good amount of people in a barrier in P3. So, you see P3 here, it depends on how fast you kill the dogs, but it lasts, does it around 3 minutes, 3.30. So that means that if you want to use P3 in here, the only time you other, other time you get it is during P1. And uh, as you cover, there's basically no damage during P1, so, you know, you can use a barrier here, but honestly, it doesn't really matter. So... Really, you can just get one good use out of Barrier here, somewhere in P3, where there's a lot of Hakuta's movement. Pain Suppression also has a really good use here in P2, during the Rip Souls. Um, as an external cooldown, as an external tank cooldown, you definitely want to use this in P3. You want to coordinate with your you know, Druids for Bark Skin, or with the tank themselves for their own personal defensives, to make sure that every time Rip Soul comes out, they have some kind of mitigation on Spear Shell does count. Spear Shell basically re removes one Rip Soul cast, right? Um, so if you can Spear Shell every other Rip Soul, then you have your Paint Suppress for the other one, and basically by yourself as a Dispreet, you can cover Rip Souls, which is going to be really nice for your team and your healers. Alright, so now we, we got our plan. We know what we're going to do. Let's jump into replay and see how it goes. Alright, here we go. Okay, we can rock and roll. Everybody's good. Uh, We're gonna see here at the start, uh, P1 just, just gonna be no damage going out. Um, see spread shot. Spread shot, like it hits a bunch of people, but it, uh, it hits them to like what? Like 80%, and then afterwards there's like 5 seconds of nothing, and like, it's easy just gonna get picked up by just passive healing by everybody, even like leech is probably enough to bring someone up. Um, so I'm actually starting my first ramp here. So what I want to do here is I want to catch the first Sin Seeker. It's really not uh, gonna, it's not gonna heal that much, it's not gonna be a huge spear show, I'm not gonna hit up to like 10k HPS. Um, but in P1, like it's better than not using, not using at all. Right, wasting your cooldown. So we just use it on the first thing seeker. It's gonna catch a little bit of this lunge, right, and get my full thing out. It's gonna catch some spread shots, one spread shot right there, and it's gonna catch these three sin seekers. Uh, you see, my HPS is 5k. You know what? That's really not the best for a spear shell, but it'll do. Actually, it does catch the next spread shot, which brings me up to 6k here, which is pretty good. But yeah, you see overall, like, during the line, during this fresh shot, Sin Seeker, like, only a couple people are taking damage. There's a dot from the Sin Seeker. The lunge itself has a dot. Let's see. Oh, he died before casting, actually. And actually, that's it. That's the end of P1. So um, my team here has kind of a lot of damage. The DPS is pretty high. Uh, that means that we killed it a lot faster than, than most people might, um, than you guys might. Um, and that means, for example, we skip that next jump, we skip uh, Sin Seeker, all these things reset 
uh, the moment the next dog spawns, right? So um, you might get a couple more damage coming out, but P1 is just just like through the lunges over and over, and yeah, probably save your spirit shell. Um, your second one, you definitely have. You definitely won't push to like a third spirit shell in P1. Otherwise, you're definitely not meeting a damage check there. So just save your spirit shell until until the second dog here P2. So you see, Rip Soul is coming out. Um, like I said, the best case of spirit shell in P2 is to uh, spirit shell on the Rip Souls. So this one's coming out. Obviously, I don't have it off cooldown yet, so I'm gonna skip this one. Um, what? What I should have done here actually is I should have put up Pain Suppress on the tank here. Um, Cause I don't have any shields up. Don't really have anything. He's not even full life right now, which is really bad. Yeah, he didn't get any external, yeah. So you see I, I guess he, he didn't use bark skin or anything either. Um You want to make sure before every rip soul, the tank that's being hit by it is definitely maxed out and he has some kind of damage reduction. So you see the rip soul here? It's like half life. That's really not good. Um, the longer this thing is up, he pulses raid damage, which is going to hurt everybody, and it takes so much healing to top him up. You're going to see here, I just spam like shadow men's and pendants, but like it burns a lot of mana. It kind of hurts. That's really not the best case. Alright, so uh, Spirit Shells come off cooldown and the next Rip Soul is coming. So we're going to start ramping for this next Rip Soul. You have to make sure that um, regardless of who the Atonements are up on, I didn't get it up on that many people here. Actually, another Raiden has come out, another 5. Um, but it's got to be on the tank that's tanking Bargast so that it actually absorbs the Rip Soul. There you go, Ripsoul comes out. Um, I had a big spear shell up on the tank. Uh, not as much as I'd hope because he still drops kind of low. Like the best case actually is that he drops to like uh, probably full life is the best case obviously, but the Ripsoul always has around 90% at least, 90% health. Um, but yeah, you can just top it up with like one Shadow Man and one Pendants. This is not that bad. Um, we can heal up pretty quickly, but um, could be better. Another thing about the spirit shot here is that you can see it covered uh, Sin Seeker earlier. It covers a couple spirit shots which is coming out all the time. Um, so P2 is not, not bad for your cooldowns. Make sure you get the rip soul topped up. For these shades of Bargast, um, they had the Deathly Roar cast which obviously you can't interrupt while you're killing them. Um, it's really, really important to make sure none of these go off. Uh, you do have tools yourself, you have Psychic Roar, Psychic Scream, and you should definitely try to use that to stop the cast. You know, you never know if someone is, while someone else is watching or not, um, so you might as well just go for it and throw CC on them. There's another Rip Soul there. Um, yeah, see, I, so I still have my Pain Suppress up. I guess I just forgot to use it in this run. Um, really, you should use it on the tank during Rip Soul. It makes it makes a difference. And there you go, he's dead. Second phase is over, and Hecutus has spawned. Um, my spear shell was just about to come up. I would have had it up for the next Rip Soul, which is going to come in like 10-15 seconds, which would have been um, where I would use it next. Obviously, we did kill it really fast, so it's not going to come out. Now that Hecutus is out, um, I should just start ramping right now. Like Hecutus is gonna start moving soon. He's already at three stacks. He's gonna have four soon, and the tank is gonna move him. Um, so just start getting your ramps out. Get your spear shell out. Uh, hopefully, you get two spear shells during Hecutus. This is actually gonna be the part of the fight where you get most of your healing in because it's actual raid damage. There's still Sin Seekers and Spread Shots going out. Go 
yeah, there's always going to be, not always, but oftentimes there's going to be an overlap of shades along with Cutis. Um, yeah, don't be shy to use your second screen here. Just throw it out on the shade. It makes a small difference. So you see here, um, one of the rules, of course, of playing this priest is to never waste radiance, right? You got to have two radiance for your spirit shell. Um, but I used both my radiances here. That's not going to be up for spirit shell because what I see is Hecutus is really low. He's already 17%. Um, there's some damage going out. So I'm going to start using just my radiance just to heal through atonement because Hecutus is going to die before my spirit shell comes up. This is kind of more of a uh, on the fly decision, right? Not really planned for. Um, because obviously, as Hecutus dies in P4, there's no more damage. So. Might as well get used out of a healing while I still have it. Honestly, it would have been fine to just save it anyways, right? Like if you're not as familiar with this fight, um, you want to focus on your ramping, then just just save it, right? And if he's gonna die, it doesn't really make that much of a difference at that point in the fight. Um, it's like basically over when he's that low. And there you go. So we jump back into the logs. Um, let's take a look at our healing here. So you see we have three uses of Spear Shell. One in P1 to cover the Sin Seeker, um, plus Lunge, plus you know whatever, Spear Shot and everything. Not really that much healing at all. Second use, we have it on uh, Rip Soul. Um, even though the HPS is not that high, the other main value of it is that the Rip Soul comes out at much higher life because you shoot at the tank so much. And then the last one here we have is during P3, um, Hakuta's movement where we actually get a huge amount of HPS here, 30,000 in this, in this burst window over here. In the replay we watched, I didn't actually use Barrier or Pain Suppress, um, a big mistake honestly. I know this rip soul was covered by the spear shell, but the one after and the one before, two rip souls here, could have been covered by uh, pain suppress. And this damage here is good as covered, but see this spike here, this spike here for the next executor's movements, there should have been a barrier down to save our team. These are the kind of things that you need to uh, watch for if your team is still progressing on this boss. Obviously, we killed each of the dogs really fast because we had a lot of damage in my raid. It might not be the same for your case. So there you have it. That's Huntsman Ultimore. Um, just not that much to talk about on this fight overall. Um, you can see that even though I got a 90 something parse, the HPS is only 6.7k, which is a lot lower than some of the other bosses you can get. Yeah, once again, this fight is not that good for disc. You kind of just have to get a feel for it when you want to use a spear shell, and it really depends on how fast you kill each of the dogs. So every single raid is going to be different. Hopefully you learned something from this video and you get your next Huntsman Ultimore fight. Like and subscribe for more similar content. Um, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.